Welcome to On The Bench Extra, tackling the latest in local football. On the show today, we'll have interviews with players, management and highlights from some of the games from last weekend. Joining me on the show today, we've got our regular pundit, Tom Reid, alongside Grimsby Town hitman, John Paul Pittman. Welcome to the show, guys. Right. Hello. So in the show today, we have got some highlights from Grimsby's tie against Wrexham last weekend, and we'll also be discussing all other things local in football. First of all, welcome, John. Could you just tell us how you've found your time at Grimsby so far? Yeah, it's been good. Um, I've been happy with how things have gone. Settled in quite nicely, quite quickly, and um, yeah, no complaints. And how have you found the, the sort of style of football and the way that Grimsby play? Yeah, I'm enjoying the style of football. You know, uh, we like to get it down and pass it, but without overplaying, as I've, I've seen, you know, throughout my career, we still like to get it forward early if, if we can do. So yeah, it's, uh, it suits my game. It suits how I play. How have you? How are you feeling in yourself now? Because obviously you had the injury. Uh, back to full fitness now. Yeah, back to full fitness now, or um, there or thereabouts. I've had a few days training. Uh, I'll be in contention for, you know, the coming games. So, you know, happy. How annoying was it for you when he was on such a good run of form, banging in the goals to, to get an injury? How frustrating was that? Yeah, well, I was saying earlier, like, um, you know, I had a little purple patch where I was doing well, and, you know, that's been sandwiched with a couple of injuries, you know, so it's a little bit frustrating, a little bit stop start, but I like to remain positive and look forward rather than, you know, what's gone. And availability for over the coming weeks, you, you know, you're feeling well in yourself and, and you're hoping to get back into the, into the first team? Yeah, yeah, well, I only missed a, missed a month, you know, I say only, it's just tough being in the treatment room and in the gym when everyone else is out training and enjoying themselves. Um, but I haven't, lost in a, I haven't lost an awful lot of match fitness, so, you know, that's a positive. Just looking at a tweet that we've had from, from some of the viewers, um, Joe Mackey says, what's been your best season as a footballer and what's your goals and aims for this season? Um, I'm torn with that one, really. I'm torn. I mean, the, the season I left, the season I left the football league and joined Crawley in the conference, that was a good, that was a good year and a half for me, really, because um, I ended up getting bought by Wickham, Peter Taylor, and stuff. But I'd have to say it's my my season in League One, uh, where we played against some big boys that season, Charlton, you know, Leeds. There was a few of MK Dons were there. Um, it was a good, it was a good season for me. And what was it like working under Peter Taylor? Yeah, that was good. Obviously, Exingdon. Uh, credentials and I think he gave David Beckham his captaincy or something, something outrageous like that. So <laughs> he used to get frustrated with us, to be fair, because he's used to working with such high quality players. We used to frustrate him because couldn't, we couldn't quite meet his demands, but he was a really good manager. I, I enjoyed working with Peter Taylor. Brilliant. Thank you very much, JP. So looking back at some of the results from last weekend, first of all, looking at Scunthorpe. Despite changes at Scunthorpe, they managed their third league win of the season. Andy Dawson's men won 3-0 away at Gillingham and that, that sets things up nicely for new manager Mark Robbins. Grimsby travelled to North Wales last weekend and came back with all three points. They beat Wrexham 1-0 with a penalty from Glenel John Lewis. North Ferriby United's FA Cup run continues as they beat Grantham Town 2-1. Nathan Jarman scored an exquisite diving header to give the Villagers the victory. And finally, Cleethorpe Town beat no Nostal Miners Welfare 5-1. The Owls continue their great start to the season. Easy for me to say. <laughs> so, Grimsby got their first win in four. Here's some of the highlights from the game against Wrexham last weekend. Uh, well in. That was Brown. Nielsen, that's a great ball. This will be McCrest. Oh, he's wider than that. Brown. Still Scott Brown, who's done well here. Looking for the ball through the middle, he gets it back as well. Scott Brown, wider the mark. Is it past the end of the wall? He's also got to get it past Craig Disley. Let's see, Brown over the top. Keats, what a good effort. What a really good effort. Where's York? Keats again, it's picked off. Disley. Here's Nielsen. Nielsen can see this space, that's what he's going to go for. Still Nielsen comes back inside. There's always oh, great ball back in. That's a penalty. That's a penalty kick. All over, all over the back of Aswad Thomas. It was a great reverse ball into him from Nielsen. It really was a great yellow card. Well, it's Linnell John Lewis with a penalty. It's only a couple of strides run up. Cochrane in his way. He 
right into the corner. Right into the bottom corner. Corner you will not find, you couldn't place it better. Oh, back there, come on, this is Clark. Still Clark. Let's see. It is, and it's over the top. Pretty vicious, got a lot of swing in the game, pace. So, Reedy, we'll just come to you first. A huge win for Grimsby away at Wrexham there. Yeah, a massive win. Uh, obviously, the, the game before that was the 0-0 draw with Altrincham, which Parno Paul Hurst was positive despite the draw because it was a good performance I was at that game. So, you know, going to Wrexham was always going to be tough. I expected a draw, to be fair. So, you know, three points is, is even better. JP, what did you make to the result? Yeah, obviously, you went there, but you, what did you think to the, the, uh, you know, the actual result in the end? Yeah, well, the, you know, obviously, come, the lads come back to the training ground and everyone's talking about the game and how it went, and everyone was really happy with how it went. You know, obviously, Wrexham had their spell in the game where they were controlling it, but it was pretty even and um, we played some nice stuff. They're a big team as well. Um, there was a, a big crowd there, a good Grimsby following. 360 Mariners fans made the trip to Wales. Um, what do you think that would have been like for the players playing in that sort of atmosphere? Yeah, it always helps, you know, the, the, the big crowds in the big games, you know, they, they motivate players. Um, and when you see, you know, your supporters have travelled all that way, you know, dug into their pockets and, and, and come to support you, that, that really helps as well. That really helps. And it was their 125th anniversary, wasn't it? I know, yeah. Grimsby ruined Rain the party. The parade there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just moving on to Scunthorpe, 3-0 win. What, what a result away from home. I was saying to JP, you know, before the show, it was the exact same 11 that Russ Wilcox had used before. And they've got a 3-0 win away at Gillingham. So, what was the problem there? You know, we don't know. It is, it is a great result. Um, and I think, you know, they, they've got the players to turn it around, you know, as we've seen. And I think they'll climb the table shortly. And... What did, what did you make to that, that result, JP? Obviously, they've got a new manager in now, Mark Robbins. Um, yeah. Andy Dawson was caretaker for that game. Um, is that difficult for a club? <laughs> yeah, I suppose it, I suppose it can be. It just, it's um, how difficult you, you allow it to become, I suppose. You know, if you just get your head around the fact you've got a new boss and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's going to take some time to adapt. And I think, you know, looking at... I wouldn't look at this fixture. I'd look at the next sort of five or six because, obviously, everyone's out to impress. A new manager comes in, everyone wants a shirt, so look at the next four or five, six fixtures and then you know, judge it on that maybe. Brilliant, thank you. Just moving on now, we're, we're going to be talking about ticket prices in football. Um, are they overinflated? Is it fair on the supporters? What do we think, guys? Ridu, we'll start with you. What, what do you think to ticket prices in football? Um, yeah, ticket prices and pie prices. You know, <laughs> We've got some stats here on the pie prices, actually. They're being did, looked did you want at. us to read a few out? Yeah. For the pie prices, um, we're looking at Hull City's £3. Uh, Scunthorpe and Grimsby, £2.80, along with Lincoln. Um, Arsenal, it's £3.60. JP, you said you liked the, the pies at Grimsby. Yeah, I had a pie the other week at Grimsby, and I thought it was one of the nicest pies I've ever had. I think they could probably charge a little bit more for it. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> they, um, no, it was, it was nice. I mean, the club's got to make, make some money, cover costs and whatnot, and if you're going to provide a decent service for that, then you can't complain. I suppose it does you know, matter, you know, the size of the pie or... The size Quality of the club of the pie. The, and the size of the club when you're looking at ticket prices as well. Exactly. I've heard Hartlepool have got a decent pie, so you maybe have to sample that one. <laughs> there you go. When town go back up. Yeah. <laughs> so ticket prices reading. What what do you think to it when you well, when you go into ground? I read something interesting today. You can see Barcelona. Well, the match day experience is the same price at Barcelona as Alfreton. You know, they're not too dissimilar. Which is incredible. Well, they are. One's in Barcelona and one's in Nottinghamshire. <laughs> well, the, the expert, you know what I mean? But the match day prices aren't so different. But, yeah. you know, one's winning Champions Leagues, one's not. That's, that <laughs> so. seems crazy. I mean, wh why do you think that is, JP? What's the situation surrounding f ticket prices and things like that? I think it's probably to do with, you know, uh, the overheads that clubs have got. You know, premiership clubs are... You know, wages, I guess, have to wages. be paid for. Yeah, yeah. The clubs are making profit off of things like pies and chips and whatever whereas you know clubs lower down are, are selling those things just to try and keep their heads above above water so you know it's, it's different for the different levels. I read a stat today Hardy um, to pay for Falcao's wages at Manchester United they'd have to sell 75,000 pies on match day that's every single fan buying a pie will cover his wages. Wow that's an unbelievable stat <laughs> how did you find that one Reader? That's slightly odd. <laughs> I think I'd prefer 75,000 pies. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe so. Grimsby Pies, of course. Grimsby Pies. Grimsby yeah. Pies. Yeah. Just a quick tweet for you uh, again, JP. Um, who's the best player you've ever played with and the best player you've ever played against? That's from Billy GTFC on Twitter. All right, Bill. Um, I think the best player I've played with is Matty Phillips, down at QPR now. Um, when I first went to Wickham, you know, he was like a young 17 year old kid, 18 year old kid, and I said to him after like the first week of training, You're going to play in the Premier League soon, mate. And he was just like, Yeah, whatever, he fobbed it off. And then he went to Blackpool and scored against Chelsea on his debut. So, you know, I can pick a player. Good. Our researcher likes to give us a few tests when we're doing our challenges. So, here's the latest head to head between me and Reedy. In 30 seconds, can you name Liverpool's team from the 2005 Champions League final against AC Milan? Dudek, Finnan, Hippia, Carragher, Risa, Gerard, Biscan, Harman, uh, Diaw, um, Kjul, Barros, Latalek, Cinema Pongol, Mella. This week's halftime teaser uh, had both me and Reedy a little bit dumbfounded. It's when was the last time Grimsby got to the third round of the FA Cup? We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to On the Bench Extra. Uh, the question I asked you before the break was when was the last time Grimsby got to the third round of the FA Cup? The answer was the 2002-2003 season when they played Burnley. They actually lost 4-0 in the replay. Coming up, we've got some more chat with our guest John Paul Pittman and we'll be previewing some of the games from this weekend. First of all, let's take a look at the second instalment of Mine and Reedy's Challenge. In 30 seconds, can you name Liverpool's team from the 2005 Champions League final against AC Milan? Dudek, Hepia, Risa, uh, Carragher, uh, Gerard, Barros, Traore. Uh, who's the other defender? Schmitz, I That was a really, really tricky one there. As we've seen in football, it's a, it's a cutthroat industry. Managers are often pressurised. Um, one of the managers we're going to be talking about in Sacco State this week, believe it or not, is Everton's manager, Roberto Martinez. JP, we'll start with you. Roberto Martinez, you said before the show you love his style of football. Everton is 17th at the minute. What do you think of that? Um, I think the way that they play, the way he wants them to play, they'll probably climb the table, so stick. Stick with him. Definitely. Reedy, what, what's your assessment well, of Everton? I can't believe we're having to discuss Roberto Martinez. Um, look, look how he started last season. They were like tinkering on fourth. I think Arsenal had a bit of squeaky bum time last season around Everton, pushing them all away. This season we thought, yep, they're going to be fourth. It's going to be more of the same. Maybe, you know, we're pushing for fifth again. And then there we are now. Um, as JP said, they're playing well. The results aren't going their way, so I'm sure it'll turn around. I've got some stats on Martinez. He was appointed manager in the 5th of June 2013. He's won 27 out of his 54 games, which, as a brilliant mathematician, that's 50% Reedy. Really. That's one over two. Yeah, it's one over two. Fantastic. So, how do we think he's done in, in his time, JP, since he's been at Everton? Yeah, I think he's done well. I can't believe uh, we're, like, we're having this conversation about you know, whether he should keep his job or not, because I think he's done really well and he'll probably continue to do well. Would you want to play under Martinez? Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, probably. if they ask me nicely, I'd <laughs> You'd probably play for him. <laughs> really nicely. <laughs> so we're sticking with Martinez. Uh, yeah, I think we should definitely. You'd be daft to get rid of him. Fantastic, thank you. Moving on to another manager. We discussed him earlier on in the show. Mark Robbins is now the Scunthorpe United manager. Reedy, Mark Robbins, do you think it's a good appointment? Yes, I do actually, yeah. Um, I say you've got the stats in front of you. Um, you. You know, you can reel them off, I'm sure. But, you know, he's... Yeah, he's, he's been at some good jobs. You know, he's been at Huddersfield, Barnsley. His best spell, I think, was at Coventry. His win rate there was his best. So I think Scunthorpe, yeah, they'll, they'll be all right with him, given time. Robbins has got a bit of um, an image as being a manager who saves teams that are struggling. So, the, you know, around the relegation zone, um, I believe he did it with, with Barnsley. 
He did the same with Rotherham as well um, and Huddersfield uh, most recently. W what do you think to, to how he's going to do it at Scunthorpe, JP? Do you think it'll be hard for him to motivate the players? or? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know any of Scunthorpe lads um, and I don't know anybody that's worked with him before. But from my previous experience with speaking to managers who have you know, lost their jobs and been appointed uh, half, midway through seasons and stuff, they say not to change too much too soon. So. You know, we'll see if he does that. We'll see if he comes with a whole new philosophy or whether he kind of sticks to the same mantra. Reid, do you think it's a bit harsh on Andy Dawson based on the result at the weekend, the 3-0 at Gillingham? I wouldn't say harsh, no. I mean, he was probably told, look, it's going to be for the one game only. We're not going to make you any promises. We are actively looking for it. I think Peter Swan said in a, a week before Russ was sacked, I think he was making phone calls. So he was looking for a new manager. It was never going to be Andy Dawson. I don't know if you saw the Peter Swan interview with Jeff Stellin. Um, Jeff Stellin had called the sacking of Russ Wilcox, something along the lines of a crazy decision. Um, and the chairman had an interview with Jeff Stelling on t TV to tell him why, why he, he did it. So that was quite an interesting Fair interview. play. He's come out and justified his decision to get rid of a manager. Not many do that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for that, guys. We're just going to move now onto the back, papers, uh, bad, the back pages of the paper, even. So first of all, we're looking at the Hull Daily Mail. Um, Steve Harper, I'm not thinking about retiring. Steve Harper seems like he has been around forever. Literally forever, um, but he said he's not retiring. JP, what do you think to Steve Harper? Obviously, he's he's a decent pro um, to still be playing now and to be thinking about you know not packing in any time soon. So fair play to him. He, he's got Alan McGregor ahead of him in the in the uh, in the line for goalkeeping, which I think is is you know is is fair enough. You know, uh, obviously Harper's not going to start week in week out, but for a goalkeeper, age isn't a massive concern. I would have thought. You know, you're not running about the pitch for 90 minutes. You need to keep your limbs flexible and, and strong. Um, and I think Steve Harper's still got that. So, you know, he, sh he shouldn't be thinking about retiring just yet. How important is it to have a, a goalkeeper, especially in the Premier League, with so much experience? We've seen it with Manchester City had Richard Wright. Um, people that are never going to play games, but they may be there to give a little bit of advice. How, how important do you think that is, JP? Yeah, really, really important. Um, I remember in my younger days at Forest, we had uh, Dave Watson, who's gone on to be, you know, Premier League goalkeeper coach, England. And um, he not only helped the keepers in the, the back four, he helped the strikers a lot as well because he told the strikers what keepers hate, what defenders hate, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they can have a real, um, a real say so on how, on how things go in a club, goalie coach. Fantastic. Know. Just moving on quickly to the uh, Grimsby Telegraph. We've got you on the back of the paper, actually, JP. You're on here. Uh, but we're talking about the cup winners, uh, the Lincolnshire Senior Cup. Obviously, it's, the season started, it was a pre-season competition, but Grimsby have won it. How pleasing was that for, for the lads? Nice. Um, you, you know, you want to be a winner, don't you? And, you know, it's a, it's a win for all of us. You know, they, they're the ones out there on the night grafting, but everyone has taken part in it at some point uh, in the competition. So it's a win for the whole club, it's a win for everybody. So we're all delighted with it. And a win against local rivals, really. How important is that? Yeah, obviously, some fans have said it's a bit of a, you know, a meaningless game in the middle of the season. But I wouldn't say it's meaningless for the clubs. Neither would want to lose that game, being, being Lincoln Grimsby. So for the young lads to win that, they've shown they could perform and maybe push the first team lads for position. Yeah, definitely. Uh, moving on now, taking a look at some of the games for, from this weekend. Um, first of all, Hull travel away to Arsenal. Um, how are they going to fare there, JP, do you think? You never know, do you? Know, you know, <laughs> I think it depends what, what Arsenal turn up as well because they've had some some dodgy moments. Um, Consistently inconsistent. That's I think. right. Yeah, that's right. So um, I'm sure Hull won't go there, you know, expecting to keep the ball off them. But if they can get them on the counter, that'll probably be their best bet. How do you think? Do you think the same? Well, really? I, I agree with JP. Yeah, Hull's but. first season in the Premier League, they they went there and won two one, and arguably this is Hull's best ever squad, best ever team. So they've got as good a chance as any now to go and beat them. How good is this whole squad, JP, do you think? I, I think it's really impressive. They've got a good blood of English players in there as well. Yeah, they're decent. Whenever uh, Match of the Day is on, I always enjoy watching Hull. Um, I always enjoy watching how they play, um, which is high energy. They've got technically good players, um, goal scorers, strong defenders, like old-fashioned defenders. So, yeah, I like, I like watching Hull play, so I hope they do well. Definitely. I like the combination of uh, Dawson and Davis at centre-back and Hernandez looks good up top. Diame's well. a revelation from them as well. Diame's been brilliant. Yeah. I mean, that's probably because I was slating him the other week. I think when um, when Scott Nielsen was on, I was saying I didn't rate Diame and he's gone and proved me wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> Must have been watching. <laughs> Moving on to Scunthorpe at home against Colchester Reedy. How do you think uh, Scunthorpe going to get on? First game for Matt well, Robbins? As, as JP said, it's the game's 
coming up now that you, you want to see how the player's performing, you know, what's done is done. They, they have to perform for the new manager because, as you say, it's, it's cutthroat. So if he doesn't like the player and he's not working for him, he might say, you know, you, in January, I, I want you to go out on loan. That's going to be difficult for some of the players, JP. How, how does that figure in? Have you ever had a situation where a new manager has come in and, and you're thinking, you know, my place is at stake here, am I going to be kept on? Yeah, yeah, we had it um, with Peter Taylor, he got us um, promoted, well we, we got promoted from League 2 to League 1 with Wickham and he lasted till about October and then obviously he lost his job and uh, we had a few days there where there was no there was no manager, we weren't certain he was going to come in next. We got Gary Waddock and, um, you know, we managed, we, we, we managed to get relegated that season anyway, even with bringing a new gaffer in, so, you know, it's a tough one. It's a difficult it's not situation. not a guaranteed solution. That's yeah, right. That's hard for players, say. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and we'll just preview Grimsby away at Torquay. JP, get your thoughts on the game. Um, how tricky is it going to be? Travel a long travel down there. Long yeah, travel. it's a long trip, but you know we'll we'll do everything we can to make sure that that's, that doesn't affect us. That doesn't come into it. Um, but yeah, they're a decent side as we saw earlier in the season, so it's going to be a decent test. They're going to be at home this time, so the pressure's on them. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier in the show, like, what's gone is gone. You have to just look forward, and it's a new day, so. Go for it. Hope him for a win, Reedy, again. Yeah, if you have the R&B music on on the way down, like Scott says you do, it might spur on. I like the R&B stuff, but I'm hearing all this new stuff, you know, that I'm not really feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> have your own headphones I in. I like the old stuff. Thank you, brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. So, JP, just going back to what we were talking about earlier, who is the best player that you've played against? Uh, I think it's a, a bit of a blast from the past, but Lee Trundle when he was at Swansea. Brilliant. How good was he, technically? Well... You know, he was dribbling down the uh, touch line and he thought, oh, this is too easy. So he put it up on his shoulder and started knocking it up along the line with his <laughs> shoulder. No one could get it off him, so <laughs> Fantastic. that good. Showboat. Yeah. Just another question. Um, this is from um, Mariner Ian. He says, who were your fo footballing idols as a child? Uh, Robbie Fowler and John Barnes were my, my idols. Right, OK. Is that the Liverpool connection coming in there? I suppose it is, yeah. And uh, John Barnes is a family friend, if you didn't uh, <laughs> oh, you know that bit really? of information, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. fantastic. How's the, where's the connection there then? Uh, he's just in, he knows my auntie and, you know, it's just the way it is, isn't it? Go to weddings and birthdays together. That kind of thing, yeah. Just yeah. best mates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that, JP. Thank you, Reedy. That's all for this week. You can tune in to Estuary TV on Tuesdays at 7 to catch On The Bench for all your local sports discussion. Thank you very much to our guests for this week. We've got Grimsby Town striker John Paul Pittman. And our regular guest, Tom Reid, thank you very much, guys. Pleasure. No worries. Viewers, you can get in touch with us on social media. It's Facebook, Twitter and email. Details are on your screen now. Thank you very much for this week. Goodbye.